Thank you for tuning into our YouTube channel. We hope that something is said that will change your life. While you're here, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, partner with us in giving. And if you're ever in the area, visit us at 2909 Horton Road, Forest Hill, Texas, 76119. Well, come on, if you're sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. God has been good to you. Cut me up just a little bit. Come on and give him about 10 seconds of praise. Yeah. I said give him about 10 seconds of praise. Come on, open up your mouth, clap your hands. Come on, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yes, let us exalt his name together. Yes. Come on, how many people know the Lord is great and greatly to be praised? Yes. I'm convinced in spite of all that's going on, we are more than conquerors. Oh, quiet. I said we win, y'all. Lord, we win. I'm convinced, thank the Lord so much for his visitation during our prayer time this morning and leadership. Listen, I really believe it's going to be an opportunity for you to take a leap this month. Are you hearing me? You need to receive that. I said a leap of faith. Soren Kierkegaard calls it the leap of faith. And so um, and he goes on in his um, expose on faith. And so he describes faith. He says that there's only one way really to measure if you have faith. And he said that comes a point in your life where you have to do one fell swoop and take a leap of faith. And he calls it the law of the absurd. And he says that God will always ask you to do an absurdity as a manifestation of your faith in him. Y'all quiet because we walk by faith and not by sight. So if you do only that which I can see you do, that which you can see is not absurd. It's logical. Lord help. God has logic, but it's not our logic. In the beginning was the logos, John 1 and 1. Logic, where we get the word logic from. But God does not think like we do. And that's why I'm kind of perplexed with this message this morning. I'm going to admit it's probably not for you. It's probably just for me. Now I'm just preaching out of my own quiet time. Um, I had a professor um, in seminary. He was... Um, Brilliant. He had two doctorates. He was a Methodist pastor. Uh, but he used to make me mad because he would say every day in class, God is a master gamesman. And I came from a little Baptist church, you know, and we just didn't talk about God playing games. And so, what's up, Joneses? It, he used to make me mad. I'm like, how is this Negro calling God a gamesman? I done left my comfort zone. I done left my, where I live. I done moved to Tulsa. My money funny. I'm working late at night at UPS, early in this class. You talking about God as a gamesman? I came to learn theology. I want to pastor a church. And you talking crazy. But I've learned... Now that I'm 53 and gray, my wife reminds me every day how gray I am. She says, ooh, it's getting gray and gray. You want some dye? I got some dye. No, let me gray gracefully. But as, as I've aged, maybe that's not absurd that God is a gamesman. Maybe maybe because of his modus, let me put Bible on it. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As far as the heavens is above the earth, so is the Lord's above ours. So I've learned even if he's not a gamesman, he surely doesn't do things the way I would. Y'all quiet, I know I'm the only one to help God. You know, you know, God tell you something, you start working it out, and it, it looks just like he said, then all of a sudden there's a, a, a turn. And it starts looking differently. And so then I figure out, well, since it looks different, I need to help God out because maybe he forgot or maybe he's, you know.
And I've, I tell folk this all the time, and I've, I've added one. I know God loves me, and he's intentional about me being saved because he called me. I don't know if I would stay saved if I wasn't called. I'm going to be real. I mean, so I commend Christians who just come to church. I mean, you just come on Sunday. We hear you. Yeah. Y'all quiet. Y'all deep over here. You just come on Sunday. If I wasn't called, I mean, some days I'm like. I ain't going today. I'm going to do like they do. Wash my car. Watch a little TV, yeah. eat a little bit, yeah. right? But this thing called this calling wakes me up in the middle of the night, yeah. makes me open my Bible, makes me fast, makes me pray, makes me want to be better, do better. And I've learned, Lord, so I know I'm saved because he called me and he called me to keep me saved. He also um, called me to be married early. And that's another reason why I'm saved. Yeah. Yeah. If I have Charlotte, Lord help. I'd be, yes. <laughs> I'd be on a winding road somewhere. Um, but let me say this. I'm going to be brief this morning. I'm going to say this. This is what I've learned. And I've learned it um, a hard way, a hard lesson. And it is... It is so profound how God reveals things to you about you. I didn't know how prideful I was. And you know, after you've been in church a while, you learn the word humble and humility, right? But it's different than knowing the definition of humility and being humble. It's a difference between knowing the definition of pride mm -hmm. and, and being humble. Mm -hmm. I've learned I'm probably the most selfish, prideful, oh, Negro there is. Yeah, so. And when God shows it to me, Man, it breaks my heart. I'm like, God, I don't want to be like that. And he says, good, because I don't want you like that. And I got something for you. And I read this text, and I almost got mad. I'm serious. Because... I don't get to preach this sermon without living it. This is one of those sermons I'm living. Yeah. I mean, I ain't, I'm not your 80 year old pastor who've lived and now have obtained perfection and ready to walk like Enoch to be with the Lord. Wow. I'm 53 with gray beard, mustache, and funny gray hair, and I'm learning. Let's read this text. Maybe it'll make sense after I read. And I promise I don't, I'm only going to preach about 10 minutes because this is a short message. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 5 through 9. Hey, Miss May. You is always gorgeous. Where Kevin at? He better, I better tell you, you better hurry up. We some men in high praise. I'm just playing. She's fam. She's like a daughter to me. Y'all look, I, chill out. I'll set it down. It's my duffel. Here's this text. I know it, you know, it may not make you mad, but it made me mad. I got over it. It's Paul. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weakness. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain 
Why? So no one will think more of me I'm not going to boast. Why? So no one will think of me more, will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. Because, you know, as preachers, we got revelation of all coming. We feel God. We talk loud. And then so we think we own a corner of revelation and own God. And so we get conceited. We feel ain't nobody in the church going to outpray us. Ain't nobody going to out-preach us. So because I got a little revelation, I'm, the, I'm God's man. Y'all quiet? Paul said, no, I'm not going to boast in that. Because I don't want you to have think wrong of me. Same, listen, let me let you know the secret. Same revelation I get, watch this, he'll give you. Preach it on corner the market on revelation. Amen. All you need is a relationship. Amen. Let, me, let me put that caveat. Yeah. There's a caveat. You need a relationship for revelation. Yeah. I'll say it again. You need a relationship for revelation. Yeah. Now, you can read on your own, but if you want real revelation from God, you need a relationship. Yeah. All right? I just want y'all to know that, so I don't have nothing to brag about. We can brag on the same thing. Amen. Boast about the same thing. Let's read it further, you know, because this don't bother me. This ain't the part that bothers me. Let's get to the part that bothers me. Here's the part that bothers me, verse 7. Or because of these surpassingly great revelations. And that's, you know, <coughs> we talked about it. Let's move on. Therefore, whenever you see therefore in the Bible, get ready. Touch your name and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Therefore, God, this make me mad. In order, Hina in the Greek, so that to keep me from being conceited. Y'all missed it. To keep me from being conceited, prideful, boastful. Think I'm the one because I got a little revelation. I preached a sermon. I had three points in a poem. But I was preaching. got excited. I sweated a little bit, half hooped, and three people jumped up and said, yeah. So I thought I was the man. Right? But Paul says, therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh. A messenger of Huh? Hold on. Are y'all reading this text? Do y'all not have the same angst as I have? I mean, God is wise. He can keep me from being conceited by uh, when I fast, take away conceit. When I pray, take away conceit. When I read your word, take away the conceit. When I witness to someone, take away the conceit. No. He says the way I'm going to keep you from being conceited I'm going to put a thorn in your flesh and I'm going to send a messenger not from your friend. I'm going to send a messenger from Satan, Sabaton, the adversary, the opponent. I'm going to send him, watch this, to buffet you. To torment you. The word there in the Greek means to hit or to afflict. Y'all sit down. I gotta, I want, I'm tagging this text. And again, I have 10 minutes and I'm going to run. So if you act like you're getting it, I'll finish early. But if you don't, I'll start all over. And y'all know I ain't preached in six weeks, so um, it's going to be hard to uh, hurry up and sit down. But I've tagged this text of developing a thorn theology. Developing a thorn theology. Because most of us do not believe that God would intentionally... Give us a thorn. It doesn't make sense if God says I'm more than a conqueror for him to send someone into my life to buffet me. Uh-oh. Lord help. Lord help. Uh. In order to keep you from being conceited. Huh? 
I got to go slow because I'm living this. Most of us don't have a theology of thorns. Most of us would never believe that God intentionally put a thorn in your flesh to keep you humble. Number one, most of us don't think we are prideful. Most of us don't think we warrant a thorn. Lord, I come to church. Lord, I give a tithe. Lord, I witness. Lord, I'm nice. I have a smile on my face. I'm not prideful. Yeah, but that manipulation and control you have, you want to control everything, that's pride. When you want to be the boss of you and everybody else, that's pride. Yeah, and some of us, you don't boss overtly. You boss inwardly. You suggest, well, baby, you don't have to do it, but if I were you, I would. <laughs> you know how you give advice? You know, you give your advice on what you do. That's because you boss it. And that's pride. That's pride. That's pride. Yeah, that's pride. You didn't even know it, did you? You thought it was godly wisdom. That's pride. Yeah, some of us dress with what the Lord told me to tell you, and that's when we really want people to mind. You know what the Lord told me? The Lord told me, and you ain't prayed four seconds. But the Lord told you to tell somebody else. That's pride. That's pride. And God said, because you have pride, you will also have a thorn. He talking to me. Now, y'all just point your finger at me and, and laugh at me all morning because it's just about me. It ain't about you. Let me, let me get through my, let me, can I get through my notes? I got a few notes scribbled down. So Paul is teaching this lesson to the Corinthians about pride. So in verse 6, as we said and already reiterated, he says, I refrain from boasting so you won't think more of me than you should. Um, again, because of revelation, many times in the church we are tempted to believe that preachers and pastors um, have an ability to hear God, see from God things that we can't. Don't get me wrong, the Bible does say, how can they hear without a preacher? But watch this, when you have a relationship with God, I should confirm what he's telling you in your closet. Well, there's some things I need to teach you yeah, yeah. It's because you may not have been exposed to them, church history, church doctrine, and certain dogma. Yeah. But understanding the scripture comes from a relationship with the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. You don't have to go to seminary for that. Amen. So Paul was meticulous and intentional about not boasting about his revelation, of not boasting about his education, um, because he had a thorn. And uh, Lord, help me. Just let me run. What is a thorn? A thorn, hope you're taking notes. We have access to Dropbox or sermon notes if you want them. But a thorn, I label this, and this is from Patrick, something which causes serious trouble or difficulty, woe, suffering, or something very serious. Let's dig a little deeper. A thorn. Thorns come, I believe, in three dimensions. First dimension, it can be relational. Second position or dimension, it can be structural. And a third dimension, it can be bodily. So what is a relational thorn? It's a situation or circumstance used in marriage or familiar relationships such as a sibling that requires you to express truth, number one, display God's love, number two, and number three, maintain the standard of holiness. Hear that. A situation or circumstances, circumstance that requires you, not the other person, It requires you to express and speak truth, display agape love, 
which means my actions are meeting the needs of the other, not mine. And number three, maintain a standard of holiness that while I'm doing this, I don't cope with, with it by sinning. That's the hard part. Yeah. We're going to dig a little deeper. The context of this is straining. Because when you have a thorn, you are called to be godly, uh -huh. irregardless of the change you see in the person you are with. Amen. So here's the caveat. I've got to express truth. I've got to maintain agape love. I've got to maintain holiness whether she changes or not. Amen. Y'all quiet. And so God calls us, he gives us a thorn when he says, here's your thorn. You got to act right no matter what you see in your spouse or your child or this loved one. And watch this. The loved one is the messenger. Amen. Y'all missed it. You remember when um, Jesus was talking to the disciples and he said, get behind me, Satan? Well, Satan is not just Satan, but Satan is who God uses to make you better. That's good. That's good. So she's not literally Satan, but she's a messenger of Satan because she's called to make me better. Let me just say this for let me let me give you a singles commercial. If you don't want to change, don't get married. I'll say it again. If you do not want to change and be transformed by the power of God, don't get married. Because if you're if you're in a Christian marriage, God is using your marriage to change you. Yeah, he's not using the church because you don't go there. You're not part of discipleship. So what he does, he uses what he has available. He going to use your husband or your wifey to change you. Y'all don't understand this thorn, the magnitude of this thorn. So God is telling me to act a certain way. It says, watch this. You have to keep acting right. You have to keep loving. You can't get upset. You can't get frustrated, even though your spouse may not be meeting your need. That's right. Because a natural proclivity of man, you don't meet my need. I get angry. I get frustrated. I want to pitch you out or I want to quit you or find out what find, go somewhere else when I'm not getting right. here. Right. So God says you have to maintain holiness so you can't go get it nowhere else. Amen. That's your thorn. Amen. And so watch this. Watch this. Here's a caveat. God does not deliver you from thorns. Yeah, that's the hard part of a thorn. That's what I'm realizing I'm living now 53. Watch this. It may never change, but you can't change either. Because usually our proclivity is, well, I done did this, I done tried this, you know, and it's going to get better. It ain't got better in three years, so I'm tired of that. I got to quit. Now, watch this. You know when you get to stop? When he returns. Because this is your thorn, and watch this, this thorn is working on your character. Amen. So in this thorn, you're learning how not to get angry because you don't get your way. Yeah, yeah. You're learning how, well, I'm not going to get mad and talk about it because she don't cook like mama. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go somewhere to have sex because we're not having sex. That's your thorn. Amen. She may never listen to you. He may never learn how to listen. He may never be a good communicator. That's your thorn. You don't get to leave. If I hear one more pass and his wife breaking up, I'm a spit. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> if y'all hear Pastor Patrick get up in his church and say, God told me that I could leave Charlotte. I want everybody to pick up some oranges and rocks and just start to stone me that Sunday. Go to the parking lot, get pebbles, get some rocks out, stone me in the church. <laughs> oh, 
God gonna tell me to quit? <laughs> Patrick, it's okay for you to quit your wife. And I don't heard him say, hey, no, neither one of us has done anything. It's just we've come to an agreement. Come to an agreement. Right, right, right. <laughs> come to an agreement. I'm sorry, I'm chasing rabbits. So that's relational uh -huh. thorn. Yeah. And listen, it ain't guaranteed to that. Here, here's the point. This is what makes it a thorn. It makes it a thorn because it's in there. But there ain't no guarantee it's leaving. Right. <laughs> and watch this. The thorn is not dependent upon the person changing. Right. Yeah, it's about you. Yep. This is weighty. I mean, I cried yeah. dealing with this message. Because yeah. I'm like, Lord, you can, just, you can just move your hand and fix it. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you was raised on the third day. Sure, you can just fix this situation. Right, right. I mean, we're just human beings. We're just bodies. You create us. You can just zap us and make uh -huh. us better. Yeah, yeah. You ain't never God wanted God to zap your spouse? <laughs> God, just zap them and make them do this. Just zap them and make them be better. Just zap them and make them. Y'all real deep. I mean, y'all. I'm sorry I prayed to God it would zap my wife before. I'm talking about the, the, the Batman and Robin zap. Oh, zap yeah Lord I want you to just zap her real good for me just zap her y'all got nice holy marriages y'all don't have no problems guess y'all ain't got no thorns in marriage I got a thorn and I'm dealing with it with grace the second is a structural thorn. A situation or circumstance that requires you to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in the face of direct opposition, such as attacks on your character, being lied on, and false accusations. This may be on your job, where folk have the wrong impression of you, or people lying on you, or you got you know, the whole corporate America thing, or you got systems on your job that you really can't navigate or, you know, just hard to navigate. But watch this. It ain't going nowhere. Amen. And your pocketbook tired of you quitting every time you have a hard job. <laughs> and your kids and your spouse frustrated because you can't keep a job because you mad and you don't like them. Stay there. Stay there. Let me say it one more time. Stay there. There, there. Not there. there. Not stay on the job. Stay there. Every time you get hard on your job or somebody accuses you, talk about you, you, don't, you quit. No, stay there. I was talking to the butlers, man. You know, I was raised in Midland. You know, I got saved and called to preach. And I can tell you, I mean, I stopped going to Midland. Because I got tired of sleeping with this person. I got tired of hearing I'm with that person. I'm like, I'm here for the weekend. How am I with them? Oh, he got a church. He ain't got nothing but four folk. He probably taking their money. I mean I, I mean, I heard it all in 20-something years. Structural. It's a thorn. And the reality, I got to live with that. I can't change what people think and how people say. And uh, why are you worried about it anyway? Listen, I'm five hours away. Keep talking. I'm living my best life in Funky Town. I got a car with my name on it. I mean, what? Let them talk. Watch this. It's your thorn. It's your thorn. Yeah. Some people will never like you just because That's you right. pretty. That's right. I know folk don't like you because you pretty. You ain't did nothing to them. Just pretty. Oh, she thinks she better. No, she don't think she better. Than you. She can't help she came out three shades brighter than you. <laughs> I was going to tell Charlotte, baby, you's a light bright. Folk just don't like light brights. 
It's your thorn. You can't change it. Are you hearing me? And the last one is bodily. This deals with physical or emotional sickness or disease. Watch this. Some things you, you can't pray off you. Amen. I thank God uh, when he delivered me from um, chronic tonsillitis. I used to get um, tonsillitis, you know, three or four times a year. Uh, and I remember one of the worst times I got I first went to college and I had tonsil, chronic tonsillitis and chicken pox at the same time. I'm like, I'm 17 years old. What am I doing with it? I mean, I had them everywhere in my life. <laughs> I mean, I had pox everywhere. Anybody ever had pox? Chicken pox? Isn't it amazing where they can just pop up? I'm like, how can you pop up there? I mean, can you just stay on my arm and my leg? I mean, I feel violated by the pox. I mean, come on. Some place you shouldn't pop up. You just shouldn't. But I remember talking to God and saying, God, I really want you to take this from me. He delivered me. Totally. I had tonsillitis in over 10 years. I laid before him to him. But watch this. There may be some sickness or disease you have that he don't take away. He don't deliver you from it. He helps you to endure it. And see, that's the thing about thorns. You endure thorns. You're never yeah. delivered from them. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And it's hard when you would think, God, I know you're a healer, yeah. Yeah. but I've had this all my life. Yeah. 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 Lord, you're a mind regulator. Why am I depressed? I have to deal with depression and take pills and you have to work, watch what I eat and watch my crowd and make sure, you know, I'm getting proper stimulus and, you know, reading my word and saying words of affirmation so I don't spiral. I mean, Lord, shouldn't my life be easy? I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Shouldn't certain things, shouldn't everything just come easy now, Lord? Why? Why am I have this particular struggle in my life? How can my money stay funny? Thorn. And again, watch this. The antidote for the thorn is again the spiritual life. Yeah. The spiritual life is the only thing that helps you to endure. And watch this. You still are not delivered from the thorn. The spiritual life helps you to endure it. Otherwise, you fall into coping skills and you fall into carnality and sin. See, the thorn never comes because of sin. The thorn comes to keep you from sinning. Y'all missed it. So a lot of people think we're dealing with this as God's punishment. No, the thorn is not a punishment. Go back and read the text. He says, so I can keep you from being boastful and prideful. To keep that out of your life, you have a thorn. So if you have a thorn, it means that pride and deceit and boasting has not overcome your life yet. Because when it overtakes your life, then he chastens you. He doesn't send a thorn. Uh-oh. And nobody shouted. You should have shouted for your thorn. I'm not, I'm not the only one who's dealing with something that ain't going away, and I'm realizing it won't go away, but I, I've realized I've got to be spiritual about it. I can't be mad. I can't look upside my wife's head. I can't judge her. I can't. No, I got to treat her with love as husbands. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. So watch this. That's the standard God gives me. So no matter what she does, no matter what you feel like you're not receiving, no matter what you feel like has not changed, you better love her. Watch this. The way I love the church or you're not walking in faith and watch this. I can't give you the strength to endure your thorn. Because when we don't walk in the spirit, we walk in the flesh. And so now we allow our flesh to deal with the thorn instead of the spirit. And then you burn out. You know what you do, it only lasts for about three or four days. Y'all quiet. And then you're tired of doing it. Then you ain't going to do it no more. Then you know what? Matter of fact, I, I just need to change. But my God, when you walk in the spirit, God revives you. He redeems you. He restores you. He gives you strength. Watch this. For the journey. He gives you strength. Watch this. And, and allows your fasting and praying to be your strength and your fuel to love her unconditionally. 
to not be mad and frustrated, to greet her with a kiss. Uh Oh, let me move on. I want to give you a couple of points. I'm through 1105 time moving quick. Let me hear. So I gave you the three dimensions of the thorn. We all have a thorn. We all agree. So we know Paul um, it could have been several things that, that were thought of to be his thorn. Number one was his eyes. He had an eye disease. Two, he was single. Three, um, he was persecuted for the church. And so many authors suggest that was Paul's thorn that he was talking about. Uh, it would be a thorn for me to be single. I just couldn't do it. Yeah, I just, I just. <laughs> Let me move on. Some people thought it was persecution, that the persecution he went through was his thorn, or again, his physical um, illness. The text is interesting. Let's read this text. Let me show you this. Look in verse 7. Um, this passing great revelation, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Um, go to the next verse. Three times I plead the Lord to take it away from me. Mm-hmm. I can't read that. Y'all read that. It got small. Did that shrink? <laughs> Underline that. I'm going to close on that. That his power, watch this, may rest on me. Wow. Somebody say sabbatical. sabbatical. Let, me, let me go back because I don't want to start hooping too soon. Wow. So what is the purpose of the thorn? Realize, watch this, so it is a message from Satan. I got to speed up. Um, I'm on my second page, but there's, there's more notes than I thought I had. I got to hurt. The message from Satan, watch this. It is, has four potential purposes. The messenger comes, watch this, to send an announcement, to teach, to perform, or to explore. So this thorn that you have, this personal relationship, spouse, child, boss, co-worker, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, that God is saying you got to be nice, Take the high road no matter what they do. It may be situational on your job. It may be body where you're dealing with the ailment, physical ailment. It's, watch this, to give you revelation for living and for purpose. All right. So in other words, the first function of this thorn in your flesh, this messenger, this person in your life. And again, um, if you go back to the text, it's not um, exegeted. Um, I'll exegete it for you. Uh, when it says um, it gives the it. The messenger, and he puts an it pronoun on it um, because of, uh, I don't have time to go into it, because of Greek grammar, subject and object, and how they're supposed to match. It should better be translated a personal pronoun, he or she, rather than it. So it does suggest that Paul is dealing with a relational thorn. Somebody in his life causing him grief, and he got to walk right. Person ain't changing, situation ain't changing, but he still got to walk holy. Do y'all know that's not, that ain't hard, that's, it's, it's hard, especially when it's tied to a need. I got a need. You're not helping meet my need, but I got to treat you right, and we married. And I can't act like I'm frustrated. I can't act like I'm mad. I can't be mad. I got to love you as Christ love you. That's a thorn. Some days I just want to cry. Lord, I mean, can I get some relief? (laughs) One day just act like I want. Y'all never had that prayer? Y'all, y'all real deep and spiritual. To watch this give you revelation for living. So this thorn, watch this, this thorn, this person in your life also brings revelation for your life. 
Yeah, they're telling you through their non-action, their non-transformation, their non-change, they're telling you how to be. Because you see how they are, and that's not what you want, so it shows you how to be the opposite. So they're not loving, kind, sweet. So watch this. I got to be loving, kind, and sweet. Watch this. Why? Because the law of reciprocity says whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. So watch this. If I'm not getting it, I must sow it. Oh, that's hard. You mean I got to be nice? It's hard being nice when your stomach growling. It's hard being nice when you thirsty. You done ran nine miles and you thirsty. <laughs> Ain't nobody giving you no water. Yeah. Well, y'all real? Y'all too deep for me. Yeah, y'all, y'all just don't have no problems. Y'all, y'all, y'all perfect. Wow. I see y'all don't want to have no real conversation. That's why you're struggling. <laughs> Be real with the Lord and yourself. Lord, this is an issue for me. And Lord, I need your help. I know you're not going to deliver me from it, but help me to endure. Give me strategies. So I'm not walking around with a frown on my face. I'm not walking around frustrated. I'm not walking around hollering at the kids and kicking dogs. Y'all just chill like, oh, ain't telling them I'm I'm fine. I'm trying to help you. I'm being vulnerable and transparent. Number two, the purpose is to teach. So if you're dealing with a particular issue, your money is always funny. Your thorns are to teach you about finances. Stop spending. That was your message saying, stop shopping. (laughs) Take what you have to the cleaners. But don't buy nothing new. Y'all quiet. If your money ain't funny, keep shopping. (laughs) And take me with you. (laughs) three is to perform this messenger and this thorn watch this actually accomplish a deeper work in you that God has inaugurated so watch this as the Bible says that deep calls unto deep the deeper work in you will not be performed without your messenger because he's not giving you to your through your preacher He don't just use me. He's going to use, watch this, a messenger of Satan. Not Satan. They're using the opposition, the opposite of play on words. The opposite of you, for you, to better you. And watch this, the last one, number four. The messenger, watch this, helps you to explore. God. See, if you didn't have the messenger to help you deal with the deeper issues of why you're mad and frustrated about what you're not receiving from your loved one, you would never know the true issue of why you are the way you are. See, some of us crazy and know why we crazy. I know why I'm crazy. I had crazy people raising me. I'm just playing. I'm just playing, y'all. Uh, not really, though. I mean, my mother, she would whoop me and take a break and eat a sugar daddy and drink a Dr. Pepper and tell me, come on back, I need to finish. Yeah, she, yeah, she was kind of Maybe not crazy, but a little, you know. Little weird, you know. Yeah. Had a daddy used to cuss me every now and then. <laughs> I've been to SOBs, I've been to MFs. No, I know that's right. You know, I felt kind of strange about that at 12. I'm like, I mean, I'm your son. I mean, do I have to be one of those today? I mean, sometimes my dad will make me feel this big. I remember he cut my hair one day. Why I let him cut my hair, I don't know. Want me to cut your hair? I'm like, you know, I want to bond with my dad. I want dad to have dad affirmation. Yeah, daddy cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, this Negro didn't know how to cut her. 
And then when I say it, I'm like, uh, I'm like, Dad, it's kind of crooked. The, you know, like up here, it's like. Then he got mad at me and said, well, if you don't like it, blankety, blankety, blank, blank, pick the hair up off the floor and glue it back on your head. I'm like, where they do that at? I mean, you cut it wrong. It's obvious my lineup don't supposed to be like at a 90 degree angle. And then he tell me to pick it up off the floor and glue it back on my head. That sound like that ought to be on the show. Parents say the darndest things. Why the thorn? Because you're boastful and prideful about something that you have nothing to boast about. That's why you have a thorn today. Number two, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, let him that boasts, boast in the Lord. Jeremiah 9, 24 says, let him who boasts, boast in this, that he, watch this, that he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For these things I delight, declares the Lord. Why the thorn, number four, to mitigate against carnal Christian life. It is not punishment for sinning. The message keeps you from being a carnal Christian. Five, to ensure or to mature you spiritually and emotionally and to develop your spiritual disciplines. In other words, God is developing your spiritual muscle through your messenger. And number one, number six, watch this, to develop a lifestyle of praise. Let me remind you that you cannot pray off, pray your thorn off. Yeah. Paul went to God three times and said, Lord, take it from me. He said, no, nah, my grace is sufficient. So what should you pray with your thorn? I'm glad you asked. Number one, pray for wisdom on what to do. Lord, you have this message in my life. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to treat her? How am I supposed to treat him? How am I supposed to treat them? What should I say? How, how do I say it? When do I say it? Y'all quiet, that part. So pray for wisdom on one, two, number three. Pray for strength for what needs to be done. Lord, now you told me what to do. Now I need strength to do it. Because I'm frustrated, my knee's not being met, I can probably only do it about a day and a half in my own street. And I gave y'all extra grace on that. Some of y'all can do about 30 minutes in your own street. You like me. You wear out real soon. I wear out quick. Four, pray for the mind of Christ. Watch this. To stay grounded so you can persevere. Then you need God to deal with your mind. Because after a while... When you're doing the right thing and you're not seeing no change, your mind going to tell you to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mind going to tell you it's not worth it. Yeah. Your mind going to tell you there's other alternatives. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Jesus. Number five. Here's the last part. Very important. Once you pray for strength, once you pray for wisdom, what to do, then you need to pray for the will to stay faithful and committed. Then you have to deal with the want to, because after a while, you're not going to want to. Because you're going to conclude, well, they ain't trying, they ain't changing, they don't want to do nothing, they ain't helping me out, so why should I keep doing what they not willing to help for? Y'all looking at me real strange. I guess you ain't never been there. But I'm trying to help two people. Or three people, at least me, myself, and I, amen. The, the sufficiency of God's grace, verse 9, this is what's important. God strengthens your body to execute, execute spiritual strategies. That's the grace. So watch this. When you choose to walk in the spirit, when you choose to be obedient, when you choose to do what you know to do, watch this. That is a tangible grace. He actually strengthens your body to do it. Amen. Number two, grace, watch this, also changes your perspective to keep you from being weary in well-doing. So again, watch this. You, understand, you need to understand this. Grace becomes tangible. It's not this esoteric, esoterical phenomenon. Grace becomes tangible. It gives you strength. Yes. Number two, it changes your perspective. Yes. 
Lord, help. If anything needs to change, I many times just our perspective on the situation. So grace comes in and sits on you. That's why the Bible says that his power rests on me. That's the tangible grace that God gives you to be transformed. When you can't do it, his grace, his love, his hand does it through you. Number three, grace causes you. Here's the important part. Grace then causes you to be grateful and thankful. Watch this. For incremental steps over observed change. So now watch this. Grace then helps you to appreciate the person no matter what they do. Or even if they change. God just gives you a supernatural pre. You look at him and you say, man, oh, you're so beautiful. Look at my baby. Look at my wife. He just does that by his grace, his tangible grace. And then number four, and this is what I'm learned and I'm truly grateful for. Grace gives you a sense of humor to maintain and sustain the relationship. Here's a whole nother dimension you need to look forward to. He will help you to laugh at it. There's some days now I sit up and I'm like, man, if you really think about it, this is funny. I've been mad and frustrated, kicking walls, putting my fist through, wall, through doors, and this is laughable. Yes. That don't come at the beginning, y'all. So some of y'all ain't laughing yet. Just hold on. Take this sermon. Develop a theology of thorns. Realize what the thorn is for. And I guarantee you, laughter comes. Y'all going to laugh about it one day. Y'all going to sit up with a, a root beer float. Y'all ain't had no root beer float lately. I had one last night. It blessed my belly, sister Nick. I'm like, ooh, I end up your root beer and this blue bell, vanilla. Lord have mercy. I almost had two. It was so good, Spencer. I said, I can't overindulge. I can't be a glutton trying to get this thing down. Somebody shout, joy comes. And I preach way too long. Let me conclude with this. Christ, watch this. Christ never broke down and cried during his pilgrimage to the cross. He was only moved to tears when God took his presence from him due to the sins he bore. Watch this. Christ didn't cry until during the beating, through placing the corner, crown, crown of thorns on his head, through him being pierced inside. He only cried when he recognized that God has took his presence from him. And he says, why have you forsaken me? That is where we ought to want to be. Where we can't live without his presence. That the only thing that shakes my life and shakes me up is if God takes his presence from me. Lord, I don't want to be in a service I can never be moved to tears. I never want to be in a place where I pray and I never feel your power. I never want to be where I read your word and something doesn't make my baby jump. Lord, never take your presence from me. Your perception of weakness will determine your characterization of your reign. And so it's not ironic, watch this, that on the Christ, the Messiah, they place, watch this, a crown of what? Thorns, Thorns on his head. Yes. What you allow to be weak is where you will rule. Yeah. Weakness is doing the right thing. Strength is walking away. Amen. Yeah, that's the macho way. Well, you ain't going to do what I want you to do. I just lead it. I'm going to find me somebody else. I don't need y'all. I don't need you. But weakness says, I need you. And I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> I'll walk holy. I'll walk upright. For you. <clears throat> the true measure of transformation is not your victories against the devil. But it is... Your transformation is proportional to your ability to live with weakness. Are you willing to live with weakness? <laughs> are, you, are you willing to live with a thorn? Because strength just takes a thorn out and doesn't deal with it. Weakness endures the thorn. Watch this, but you will never experience 
the power of God resting on you without a thorn. The greatest power you will have without a thorn is your power. And you can boast in, I took my thorn out. I didn't deal with my wife. I got a divorce. I didn't deal with my children. I don't talk to them no more. I don't worry about their job and how silly they are. I quit and got another one. And you spend your whole life running from thorns. And you strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger but unproductive, unspiritual, and never transformed. Say that. Say that. But how many people are willing to be weak yes. to say, Lord, this is, it will never change. It may never change, but watch this. I'll be transformed. Yeah. I'll walk in humility. I'll walk in love. Yeah. I'll walk in forgiveness. Yeah. I'll walk in authority. I'll love unconditionally. It doesn't matter if the person changes or not. I'll walk in weakness so your strength can rest on my life. Again, walking in the spirit persistently and consistently is the antidote to the thorn. They provide respite but not rescue. God will always give you rest with your thorn, but he will never rescue you from the thorn because the thorn is the only thing that will keep pride from raging in your life. We would like to invite you to partner alongside us with your tithes and offering. You can give electronically through Givelify, or you can mail your seed to 2909 Horton Road, Forest Hill, Texas, 76119. Are you interested in making Higher Praise Family Church your new home? Head on over to our website and hit contact us in the upper right corner. You'll get added to our church roster and you get plugged in to our discipleship group. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to Higher Praise Family Church and our YouTube channel. Can I admonish you, please subscribe to our channel and share it with your family and friends. Also want to invite you to follow us on social media as well as visit our website at www.higher-praise.org.